in uh, those words. And um, I think one way to start is uh, I'm going to read from Whispers from Eternity by Paramahansa Yogananda. And it's a beautiful a prayer demand, which is make me anything, a Christian or a Hindu, anything to realize thee. Let me be a Christian, Jew, Hindu, Buddhist, Mohammedan, or Sufi. I cannot, what, be my religion, race, creed, or colour, if only I can win my way to thee. But let me be none of these, if that identity enmeshes me in the enclosing net of religious or social formalities. Let me travel the royal high road of realisation, which leads to thee, I am travelling on some bypath of religion. Lead me onto the one common highway of realization, which leads straight to thee. Send me the sunshine of thy wisdom, that it lead me to the morning of my growing powers, and send me the moon of thy mercy to guide me rightly if ever I lost I am lost in the dark night of sorrow. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. It's very easy because it was quite a humorous story uh, of Master speaking to a very uh, vigorous uh, devotee and um, was listening to a talk by Jyotish who has actually met um, Debbie and he's a devotee and he was the same apparently years later was just that really just very vibrant very energetic and um so persistent. persistent very persistent wanted to get his point across um and it was amazing just to hear how uh master just gently humored it and brought in a little thing and yes rightly so it can be a little confusing you know when we hear that we are all but then not to identify with that and um there's a couple of reasons that I understand that it's important to understand. And we were literally, um, Kalamali and myself are doing our YTT and we're talking yoga about the teacher training. yoga teacher training. We're uh, talking about, we do uh, in this path, Hong So. And has anyone heard Ho Sum? I think it's been around, is it yeah. So Hum? So Hum, sorry, I got them mixed. And there's subtle differences, and it's to do with the, uh, interesting enough, it's to do with the yugas and why Master was actually brought into this new energy, of, uh, new age of energy. Um, during the last age, um, everyone was very sort of isolated and, and singular. And so, um, so hum was about that exact statement, which is unity to you, whereas Hong So, I'm getting all meddled up now, they're all the same, but Hong So is the same, I am the, or I am nine. And so it's a, it's a subtle difference, but it's really important in this age to identify with that. So after that last age of energy that we had, um, everyone identified all the groups of religions that we just heard about. So they identified that they were God and they were of that, um, that was the only path to be. So if you can imagine um, that analogy of the wave, the wave is a part of the great ocean, but every, if every wave in the ocean identified themselves with the ocean, they would think that they were amazing and great and they were the only thing that existed. And it's kind of a bit like that. We're, still, we're on that cusp of change of energy where we are, but we still, Master was very, subtly indicating that we he did never ever wanted to be identified as the body that he was brought into didn't want that um to be identified with that he wanted because otherwise people would then think that that was the only path to god if if that was that creation and how he was brought about so it's kind of like a a subtle difference inwardly he was connected he had that connection and great masters have that connection but as a channel they don't want to they still want that subtle difference because they don't want to see god then as that figure as that body as that um and then everyone thinking well hey we're all 
disciples of Yogananda, this is the only path, this is the only way um, that we want to be, because that then falls into churchianity, doesn't it? It becomes that identification and then rigidity, and, and which isn't the ocean at all. Um, and it is subtle, but it's kind of really important when we're on our um, on a path. And so the best way to describe it, um, and Jyotishji explains it really well, the previous era or yuga that we were in um, was kind of like a more solid state. We're more identified with solidity. So you can imagine a bowl full of ice cubes. Um, that was kind of what we all were. We're all individual ice cubes and each religion that were um, were brought about were, were that. They were in this solidity, they were, had this identification and they held onto it tightly. As we move into this energy age or this energy era, as you add energy to something like us, you can imagine what happens, it becomes more fluid and then we start having it become more water. So you can imagine how now we can start seeing that we are this great ocean and this connection but there's still these little bobbing icebergs floating around, bumping into each other. And Storms and, on and, and so um, Master was really, really uh, in this statement alone because elsewhere it seems quite contradiction because he says we are one with creation, we are this, but he still didn't want us or this bodily figure to be identified with that. And it kind of makes sense because we, we, there are many paths. There are just not... Um, from a religious point of view or a, a belief point of view, we all have our own individual journeys to find God. We've got our own karma. We've got our own path to find that. So to be as bold as to say that there is only one path across the world sort of goes against um, almost everything that um, the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda and these great line of uh, uh, self-realized masters and there are others but this is the lineage that we follow and these um, all the way from Jesus uh, through this lineage but again they are here to bring truth to all and one of from autobiography of yogi and it was uh, Peru Selby actually said it but if you actually read it that book is really a Dedica uh, dedication to Sri Akteshwar. It's almost his story and this journey. So these teachings and journey plays a significant part in this um, path and the truths. And they were assigned down this lineage to connect truth, um, predominantly the truth but behind uh, modern, I guess, modern day Hinduism, um, as opposed to Sanat and Dharma. But Sanatan Dharma is truth behind all things. And so it's hence with Christianity, it's taking away the dogma, um, churchianity of each of those and pulling the truths. And you'll actually find it within all things. Um, and it's kind of interesting. I was listening to uh, uh, some uh, readings uh, called the, a book called The Physics of God. And it's such an interesting thing, you know, we in this world want to challenge things or we want, to, want that scientific proof behind things. And we know that scientific evidence comes from consistent findings or you have a series of things that you can compare outcomes to. And whether it is science, often some of the greatest science are very biased in, re in relation to things, but there's um, certain truths with all things. It's like there's a thing called, I don't know if anyone's... Um, near-death experiences and where people have experiences beyond death and these time frames and there's lots of evidence from all over the world now it's an emerging thing it's an emerging thing because we're in an age of energy where we do have the technology to bring people back to life in certain aspects you know we have defibrillation and all these amazing technology and so near-death experiences are on the rise and it's so interesting when you look at the near-death experiences from a scientific point of view, they all have significant outcomes that are exactly the same. People have these visions of light, colour, feelings, experience um, across the world, but not just in specific religions, in all religions. And 
So it's kind of an interesting thing. And same thing, if you sat down, which these um, great masters and often the attraction to this line or different religions is that the truth behind them <coughs> is quite common. And um, I, I think that is exactly why if we re read the passage that it was, it says, um, the greater a spiritual teaching, the more greatly we portray it by particularizing it with dogmas. And I think it's such a good thing to hold on to with anything that we do, it's sitting and seeing the truth. And one of the best parts of this path is meditation. We sit and we sit in silence and wait and allow ourselves to be exposed to truth rather than trying to shape and mold the path that we want to. And in, in that we individually can work out our own karmas. You know, we are blessed with our, the aeroplane route to freedom, which is uh, Kriya Yoga. And Kriya Yoga is, is really getting rid of those vrittis and the, the, um, the things. Cycle. That, the, yeah, absolutely. The cycle that we're on as individuals, we share that um, the, the meditation that we did today. We are connected, we are that but we still have this individual path that we want to follow and, and get there. Um, we are drawn probably through many lifetimes. We're all probably sat and met at some stage. We have this commonality um, wherever we are, but we are drawn within that uh, on this pathway. And who knows, interesting enough, we could have, when we met previously, we could have been Sufis. We could have been anything like we don't know. But the underlying truth has brought us back to learn our lessons to bring us back, um, which is kind of really a fun way to look at it. And <clears throat> excuse me, it's, it's kind of a really uh, um, interesting way to view things. And I think it's a real subtle difference um, between coming into this age of energy and connection and seeing ourselves as separate or uh, not separate, should I say, not seeing ourselves as not being separate, but connected to all beings. And um, there are many quotes, um, if anyone's ever had this, but the essence of self-realization, they're just a series of quotes from Master that sort of align. <clears throat> so self-realization means realizing your true self as the great ocean of spirit by breaking the delusion that you are this little ego, this little human body and personality. But we do that individually by the, the teachings and the path that we do <coughs> and the seeking of truth rather than the dogma of religion. So I'll leave you with that thought. Maybe you, would you like to stand and join? Sure. Or say anything? So I just thought I'd share a bit about that definition of self-realization that you were just sharing um, from Yogananda. And I just remember the first time that I heard somebody explain this, I thought, oh, yeah, we're all doing that. That's what we're all here for. That makes so much sense. And I think that's a really relatable experience where they call it smrit smriti, it's the divine remembrance of truth. So if it, we all started as one consciousness, pure consciousness or satchitananda, bliss that's the state of bliss that manifested itself into creation because guess what joy likes to share itself the nature of joy is to share and the nature of bliss is to share bliss so once we became a part of creation we had to remember that we actually came from bliss so basically what self-realization is is the knowing in body mind and soul that we are omnipresence. We actually, that's what the definition of yoga is, is union. Back to that Christ consciousness. Just to explain, that's why Jesus is here. It's because we recognize that he had attained that state of oneness, where through bliss, he could then share in daily life with individual souls on this planet, truth, and helping them through love and compassion and showing examples of that. And it's the same with uh, the masters that appear in Autobiography of the Yogi. They were performing the same um, abilities of sharing 
the aspects of the divine, which we know there are eight. Who wants to tell a few? There's light, joy, power, love. Pe peace, calmness, yeah, love, and sound or om. Hmm. And so one of the things that we can say to ourselves as we go out and we think about, you know, I am spirit, I am joy, I am love. So whenever we move outside of that, that's when we're caught in the creation, that little, um, they call it Leela, which is a nice way of saying the divine play. <laughs> but we need to remember why we're here is to be educated and entertained. But Yogananda said, how few of us are really ever educated or entertained while we're here on this planet. But we're trying, we're trying to get back to a place where we can stand unshaken amidst the crash of breaking worlds. Today in this Leela, this divine play, or another way Yogananda put it is the cosmic motion picture, where there's light and shadow and evil and good. And we're really involved in that, right? We were taking it very personally, but that isn't so much fun. It's where we get into suffering instead of into joy. And so the, the more that we practice these techniques or uh, meditation, yoga, chanting, anything that we can do to feel calm, to feel a sense of peace, to feel joy, to touch into wisdom from reading something inspiring or being with each other, that's how we make ourselves remember. And then we can avoid all this pain and suffering because the great ones who follow the path with all their heart, and as Nara said, there are as many spiritual paths as there are souls. That's what Swami Kriyananda shared with us. He said, yes, this is a path, but each of you will take it individually. We all have our own journey back to the peak. Um, this is the peak, is our spiritual eye. And we start at the base where all the, the chakras begin all the way up. So that's the journey. Somebody else said it really well. This is the path from the base of the spine to the spiritual eye. That's our spiritual path. That's why the science of yoga is universal because it's working with the human body, mind and soul, which is the same for all beings. And so that's why this, essentially the science of yoga is something that we can all relate to. We can all relate to the laboratory of our own experience and say, yes, when I meditate and when I practice the teachings of spirituality, it's helping me feel more light. It's helping me feel more joy. And what's the point? To have more of that. And so we just start here to really encourage each other to do that, to do what we know will help us. And then ideally, we don't have to keep doing this anymore and keep coming back again and again and again. <laughs> Yogananda called it the anguishing monotony. Have you ever had that moment in life where you're like, oh gosh, I just can't do this anymore. Wake up, eat, work, go to bed, do it again or have fights with people. I just, you just know you don't wanna do it anymore. And the yoga masters are like, I know how you feel. I've been there too. I've done it a bunch of times, maybe millions of times, <laughs> but I know how to stop. Do you wanna like learn? And as Nara loves this little analogy says, yeah. And then you get on your phone and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. And you kind of like turn away and you don't listen. And they're like, okay, fine. I'll just wait for you. Come back when you're ready. And then you're like, oh, I'm ready. And then you're like, oh, no, but I just got a new job. Bye. And then you go get distracted again. So Yogananda's still there. He's still trying to help. And he's there when you need him through him. Or he said, I will take you to whoever is your guru. Just ask me and I'll help you. He's just here to help, right? So I think the idea is that if we can all just say, this is why I'm here. So what can I do? What do I know helps me? remember who I really am and how can I help others? And that's what, that's going to make life so much better. And then maybe we won't have to do it again because maybe we'll get to the goal, which is freedom and remembering who we really are. So the way we do that more and more on this path, we talk about meditation and service. Meditation is communing with bliss, which is best done through the Kriya Yoga which is that science of 
the physical, astral, and even causal being that we are. Each of our souls is encased in three layers. And, and then the more that we um, serve the divine in others, what does this do? Dissolves our ego. There's nothing wrong with the ego necessarily if it's doing the work of the divine. But that's what our free will is. Our free will is whether we act for the light, which is lifting our energy up as much as possible to the higher chakras or energy centers, instead of letting them go out and at, what do we say, down and out into this Leela or in and up to the divine. So we're all here to help each other do that and be there for this planet, you know? So service, meditation, it's not so hard when you put it that simply. And it's very doable. And that's what they're here to, to tell us. You can do this. And as Yogananda said, the time is now. Don't wait. He said, don't wait. Stop waiting. And then, you know, when we put down our distractions, our phones, our problems, our worries, he's right there and he's ready to help. Whoever that is, that can be divine mother. It can be just spirit. It can be, you can even just think of the divine as joy, light, or own. So whatever it is, but tuning into that and making that be your free will is that choice. You put that first and then help others. And that's the way. So thank you all. And um, I thought we could end with a little song that kind of uh, encapsulates this. It's uh, I believe it's called, um, well, Make Me a Channel. Does anyone mind handing me the songbook? I can tell you guys. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so yes, Make Me a Channel of Thy Peace. It's, um, I think it will be in that blue one, the light blue one. There it is. If you want to hand that back to them. You can sing along if you want. It's a very beautiful song. And I'll put the link. Here we are. Lord Most High, our Heavenly Father, all our lives we dedicate to Thee. All our labors, all our joys and woes. All our pleasure, all our melody. Make us each a channel of thy peace. When in darkness, guide us from above. Where there's sorrow, may we sow thy joy. Where there's hatred, may we share thy love. Lord Most High, our Heavenly Father, all our lives we dedicate to thee. All our labors, all our joys and Each a channel of thy peace. When in darkness, guide us from above. Where there's sorrow, may we sow 